GM. Hi, and welcome to a long play video. Um, I meant to do this yesterday on, on Monday, but unfortunately I was away playing chess. So in future, I'm going to try to release a, a long play video every uh, every single Monday. Uh, that's the idea. It's going to be difficult for the next couple of weeks because I'm in Gibraltar, but uh, I'll do my best. So uh, here we are, and I'm playing against, uh, let me just change that slightly, playing against a, a decent player, actually higher rated than me, um, from the Philippines, is that? And so I'm going to try a different opening now. Something I've been uh, looking at a little bit is Bishop G5 here, and this is the so-called Trompovsky. So I'm going to give the Trompovsky a whirl today. Now the reason I'm looking at this, I'm always trying to improve my chess knowledge and opening repertoire and and the way I normally do that throughout my life is I've tried to build upon an opening that I've previously known. So when I started playing D4, I tried to I played I played D4 after I played the English because I thought they were quite similar to each other and I find I find that some of the positions with the Trompovsky are quite similar to lines in the London system um, so hence why I'm sort of experiment with this to see what I'm more most comfortable with now my opponent has gone c5 one of the sharpest moves against the Trompovsky and here I'm gonna go d5 this is the main move now it may be possible to play e3 and uh, c3 uh, like a London system, but but d5 is is the normal response um, against this c5 move. Gain some space in the centre. My opponent is now playing, I think, the main line, knight to e4, and now I have a decision to make. Now now the move, my pet move here, and you probably can guess what it is. It's Harry four. Uh, the Trompovsky, this this line with bishop g5 was quite popular in about um, the 80s, 90s, with a lot of English players, Julian Hodgson, Mickey Adams, uh, and then later on Luke McShane and other players started to play. I guess Julian Hodgson is, is the main guy who doesn't play chess anymore, but he, he was very strong, 2650. And he, he, he came up with a lot of interesting ideas in, in this opening, the Tromp Trompovsky. And I'm finding as, uh, as my chess career develops, um, and it does develop even though I'm a grandmaster and I get older, that I'm thinking now I want to play tournaments. I want to avoid mainline theory a lot. So an opening like this is probably uh, a very good way to play. Okay, so my opponent, again, has played the critical line. He's come to attack this pawn. Now, I can defend that pawn, but that is uh, 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 not uh, the way to play this opening. I, I would rather here uh, give up this pawn somehow. So I'm just thinking, I don't know the theory of these lines, but I'm going to give this pawn up. And this is normal. I know this is normal for the Trompovsky. Again, I, I don't really know the theory here. I've been sort of making these things up. Knight c3, don't want to double my pawns. So I'm going to give it up like this. I'm going to go knight d2. I'm just going to develop. I want to eliminate my opponent's knight on e4. My opponent has to waste some time taking that pawn. And... I'm going to try to build a center with e4 um, and also rely on my uh, pawn being on, on this square. So my opponent has played an interesting move. He's played h6. Now, uh, the first thing that jumps to mind is knight takes knight, pawn takes bishop, knight takes g5. Uh, and then I guess he'll take on b2 with some queen c3 check ideas. Do I have rook h3? and then rook b3, because that way I don't even sacrifice pawn. I mean, bishop f4 is a perfectly okay move then. But then there's some queen takes b2, I seem to recall, tactics. Knight takes e4, queen b4, check. And again, that position is probably okay, but it, it looks to me like knight takes knight is very interesting. Pawn takes, knight takes g5, queen takes b2. And... Well, he is threatening his queen c3, which, which is quite annoying. Uh, rook h3, it's a very weird, weird move. d6, rook b3, and we get a very 
odd position there. Um, let's give it a go. It, it looks interesting. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spend too long uh, thinking about that one here. So I'm just gonna take this one uh, at the moment, and I'm gonna take on g5 with my knight, and hope that my knight is 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 a annoyance for my opponent's king and the other thing is now now that i've eliminated my opponent's h pawn um it's gonna be harder for him to castle so i was thinking of rook h3 here and rook b3 that that looked very interesting because i've got to watch out for this move queen to c3 check queen to c3 check is is, is very annoying if i go rook b1 i have to exchange queen so rook, rook b3 coming over to rook h3 coming over to b3 it's a very interesting way to play here. Of course, it means I can't castle as well, but uh, let, let's try this one. So I'm stopping my opponent's threat, and I'm also thinking about bringing my rook over to the B file. Interesting position. And also, I can consider bringing it to F3. I mean, this is a weird beginner's way to, to develop here, but it, it, it maybe is... is, is very playable okay so he hasn't gone d6 so he's gone knight here maybe he wants to bring his knight to to b4 we've always got to watch out for what our opponent's doing um now rook to b3 looks very playable now queen d4 and then what if i take on d4 and try to win this pawn maybe queen d4 is annoying uh, in some respects there. I, I also really like this move d6. I'm kind of thinking d6, so he can't play d6. A bit of a, a bit of a weird move. Let's see. Let's see d6. Knight to, knight to b4. And am I in a lot of trouble then? Um, maybe. What if I go c3 here? C3. So his queen can't come on this diagonal, and I keep his knight out the game. And I've got rook f3 then. That looks very intriguing. Because, okay, so rook b3, queen d4. Oh, I have rook d3 there. No, because h4 is H4's on pre. So I'll probably have to exchange queens. I don't really want to do that. I'm going to play c3. Two reasons. Stops knight b4 and it stops his queen coming back this way. So it means his queen has to stay on the queen side. Uh, and I can hope then to build an attack on, on the other area of the board. But it gets very interesting after something like d6, rook f3. And you can also play play this move obviously straight away. Um, with what can only be described as a really odd position now. A uh, very unique position. Now, I think I have to move my knight. And... It looks to me like I have to move it to e4. Then he's going to play d6. Okay. Any tactical ideas with trapping his queen? Rook here, queen takes here. Um, I can't see how I'm going to trap the queen in that position. So knight to f3 at some stage is better. The problem is if I go knight e4, d6, I move my rook, he takes here. I think I think I'm just going to play this one first, because I, I I'm not I'm not too worried about giving up another pawn because then you know I've got this rook coming to b7 if he ever moves his bishop and I don't I don't really want his queen attacking this pawn because I'm thinking when I move my knight he goes d6 I then have to move my rook okay so he's he's not grabbing the pawn at the moment and if I go c4 he's he's going to play this check here so he's keeping on my pawn here so knight e4. Uh, pawn to d6 and I can go rook b3 here this is a way to to ensure this one is is, is defended um, any other options uh, what about I mean I don't have any crazy moves queen c2 taking queen g6 check do I? I think he just goes king king d8 and I don't have enough pieces attacking I just noticed my, my, my face is going white and red, so I'm sorry about the settings there. I don't know why that is. I'd love to have one more move because then I have ideas of knight e6. Knight e6 just looks rubbish here. I want to have some check on b5. Um, so I think I'm going to play this rook b3 just to keep my rook. Okay, so let's just do some lines. So knight e4, pawn here. And then 
this is a bit annoying because I'm dropping this one. I, okay, I'm going to go rook b3. Let, let, let's play rook b3. See where see where he moves his queen to. I guess he, he, t he just takes the pawn now. And this may well be theory, you know. This is one of the things that I should really know if I'm going to play this opening um, on more occasions. I'm kind of thinking my knight's not good on e4. I, I mean, it looks natural there, but... On knight e4, d6. I can't. I'm trying. I'm struggling to find a good move. Can I? Can I play? Oh, can I play rook e3? That is in the spirit of the mad position. Okay, let's do that. Yeah, that looks like fun. So we go here. Maybe I didn't need to sacrifice the pawn, but I'm figuring his queen is quite a long way out of play on a2. And give me a chance. I will play d6 automatically uh, if I can get d6 in I'm not really worried how many pawns I'm down because his bishop can't get out um, if he plays d6 I'm going to go rook e3 with ideas a knight takes d6 using the, the rook on his king very peculiar development of my knights here but I'm also not particularly well developed here um, these two pieces are, are not happy and um, I need to work out how to how to try and uh, get these guys in the game. So I need to probably get my rook to e3, knight to f3. But how am I? If I I'd love to get my bishop to b5, but at the moment that move just seems like a, a dream. Uh, you know, to to place my bishop upon that square, as my pieces are in the way uh, at this moment. So okay, so the plan is I'm not going to think too much here. If my opponent plays d6, I will play rook e3, I think. And if he doesn't, I really want to play d6. I really want to play d6 because it messes up his development. He has got a good square for his knight here. d6, pawn takes, and he wants to maybe go d5. But it's so tempting to play d6. I mean, should I go rook e3 first here? With ideas, a knight d6, rook e3. And just forget about my bishop. My bishop not playing so much of a part, is it? I mean, I, d6 is kind of natural. Pawn takes d6. And I really want to get my bishop to c4. But in order to do that, I have to move my pawn. And then my rook never plays. So I think I'm going to go for rook e3, uh, this, this very peculiar move. And at least this way, when my knight comes to f3, I could say my rook is a bit more active here. Um, I'm going to have to forget about my bishop on f1, I think, for, for this game. My bishop on f1, the only way it's going to get in is, is via these two squares now, which is disappointing. If I had this position with my bishop on somewhere like c4, I, I'd be feeling very confident with that extra development. Okay, so he's gone king here. Now d6 again is, 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 is a move... I really want to consider takes, takes, knight takes, bishop takes, queen takes. Got some problems with my back rank there. What about I play some idea with c4 in this position? And then I have ideas of knight c3 and rook here. Interesting. Uh, so d6, I'll just look at one more time. d6, pawn takes. And the thing is, if he goes d5, then he's, he's okay. But can I stop it? So d6, pawn takes. His knight's okay. And this is where I want my, my rook back on this square, unfortunately. Here, he will play d6 himself. I like c4. I like c4 because it gives my rooks a little bit more protection. It might open me up to ideas of rook a3. And to chase his queen down. It opens me up to ideas knight c3, chase his queen down. But I also would have loved to get my bishop to that square. Maybe, maybe I should have gone with a natural idea of d6. Such a complex position. Probably, you know, rushing my moves somewhat here. Um, I just realized he also has queen a5 check always to get out of trouble. Then knight d2. And again, I have rook a3. And I mean, maybe one of my plans here is actually put my knight on d2. And then I can threaten to trap his queen with something like rook here and rook here. That's interesting. So if I go rook a3 straight away, he might be able to take on c4. Um, so that's that's another way I can play. So okay, so he's played an aggressive move. Uh, this 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 break here. And right, well, 
Uh, it's really about cal my calculation. A little bit I'm not calculating at the moment that well in my seams. So knight here, queen a5, pawn takes is, is one option I have. Um, d6 takes, knight takes, takes, queen takes. I don't have enough development for that. If I take here, c4, why can't I just take this pawn? Should I just not take the pawn? Do I have any other ways I can try to trap his queen? Knight c3, queen here, no. Uh, rook c4, no, I get, well, well, I think I should be taking this pawn. Let's take this pawn. I think I'm gonna take this pawn. I need to, uh, I need to keep my pieces, uh, uh, I need to keep playing aggressively. And if he goes c4, then I have rook here. And maybe his queen is is, is fi finding it difficult to get, get a good square. But actually c4, c4, rook a3, queen b2, knight c3. And yeah, he has e6 then as well. This maybe hasn't gone as well. This, I mean, this very complex, weird, it's a very weird opening, this one. And uh, I'm not sure. I think I've misplayed this somewhere. I have to. I have to put this on the computer afterwards, and and see where whereabouts I I, I have gone wrong uh, during, during the course of this game because this is not this is not really. I, I think my plan has uh, has not really been 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 working so well here. Okay, so he's given a check. Now, um, knight here. Knight takes here, coming into d4. Knight c3. Here, I think I need to guard this pawn. I don't want his knight coming to this square, so c3 must be the right square. I mean, it would have been great to get my knight to c4 there, uh, in that position, but it's very hard to do with a pin. Um, and I kind of, I'm kind of doubting my my whole idea. I mean, okay, but my position is still very, very murky. I mean, one thing I'd love to do now. Let's try to get this knight in the game, get this knight to c4 uh, eventually. Um, but I, I think my whole plan was swinging the rook uh, to e3. Uh, I have my doubts because I'm not developing my minor pieces. It's a bit too, it was a bit too extravagant. Uh, what is the pawn count? I think my opponents are pawn up and it's just a very murky position. So I think it's, you know, any result is, is totally uh, to be expected in this position at the moment. Um, my plans now, because of course I want to play the move e4. I mean, if I can, again, I keep going on about this bishop c4 move, but if I can play e4, bishop c4, I would start to be coordinating very well. Why don't I put my rook here? I mean, even somewhere like rook g3, queen c2, queen g6, this would have made uh, more logical sense. So you've got to be critical of your own moves. Maybe not during the game, when you're actually playing a real game, uh, but certainly after 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 a game, you, you, you have to try to be critical uh, to work out how to improve uh, for the future. Um, okay, anyway, so my opponent's pieces are also not very good. So, uh, you know, uh, he's got his pieces are very, they're not doing much. Okay, so he's got bishop b7. Um, he's threatening now to, to take this one because of the pin on my knight. So... I could now consider ideas of rook g3, knight takes, and then e4, knight takes here, rook takes c3, and, and try get my pieces in the game like that. that. That's one interesting idea. If I try to develop my knight, he goes knight takes here. It's a bit annoying. Queen d2, he can still go knight takes here. There's some trick, knight takes, queen takes d2. So if I go rook d3, he has c4. Um, so what do I do? Maybe I have to go rook here, knight takes, and play this move, e4. Knight takes here. And then rook takes here. But I don't believe it. I don't believe it. It doesn't look good. Um, so really, it, it, am I just dropping this and, and finding myself in trouble? Is it that simple? Uh, this position okay well let's keep trying to find a way out of this rook here knight takes here see this it's just this rook putting a rook on e3 is a very bad practical decision really really r regretting my thought process there queen d3 knight takes here queen here 
No. No, 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 no. Queen here, knight takes queen here, just e6. Rook here, knight takes queen g6. Knight takes here, queen check, king g8. Nope. I don't have enough pieces do, doing the, the, what I will need them to do here. I need I need my pawn on e4. This is just a very bad position without my pawn on e4. Uh, the opening has not gone to plan. Um, okay, queen to c1, knight takes here, rook to a3. That's not helping. d6 takes rook g3. D6 takes queen d3. Knight here, queen c4. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try this one. At least this is a move I've been wanting to play for some time. I mean, I, I'm a little bit worried about two moves. Knight d5 straight away is 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 a little bit of a concern. When I can play, I wanted to play rook g3. I'm getting a, okay. So he has played it. So if rook here here takes 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 no i'm going to play rook g3 but I, I think my position is yes suspect and i'm hoping if i can just get a couple of developing moves in this is my chance to bring some life and attack but it's not easy to do and i i now my position is crumbling isn't it this move if I move my rook, he takes here. Then I have queen d2, keeps me in the game, but only barely. And if e4 takes here, takes on d5, do I get an, a, a, any counterplay there? His b2, his b pawn, his c pawn, the b pawn becomes too strong. Yes, not good. Rook here, knight takes queen d2. Probably my best chance, and then I can win the knight back and pray. There's nothing with queen c2 here. Takes check. Yours has king g1. I just needed to get that bishop in the game. This is this is gone wrong. Okay, so I I have to play uh, some move like this, um, and this has probably been one of my dis biggest disasters uh, so far uh, when I played this long play. And I think it's worth pointing out that when you when you play a new opening, you're, you're naturally going to have some disasters occurring, um, as 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 is happening here, uh, because you've got to learn the opening and things are going to go wrong. So okay, so so e6, and well, queen c2. Let's play queen c2. We've got to do this. At least if bishop takes here, I've got some check. King here, check. And I get my queen in the game. So I can do this. Uh, but I think something like knight takes knight and bishop takes d6. And uh, I think uh, I think it's, it's probably going to be game. So, yeah. So one thing I have to do. I, I mean, let's imagine this was a real game. Or maybe you guys should play the same time limit if you want to try out openings. And you have a disaster like this. Well, what we'd do... Um, after this game, I will have a look on the computer. I'll use the computer for this because it's kind of such a tactical game. I kind of feel my opponent was more prepared. And I'll, I'll have a look on the computer to, to see um, where whereabouts I, I went wrong. Okay, so rook takes h4. And uh, my position, of course, really, really struggling here. This check, he just goes king back. Uh, my piece is no coordination. I hate it when you get this kind of no coordination. It's it's not the way I play. I need to have coordination when I play. Um, do I have knight here, queen takes c3? Nothing. e4, knight takes here. Nothing. Uh, I'm running out of moves because these pieces just can't play. This is the, this is the, the buggery of it. So... Uh, what can I do? Well, I'm going to play King D2 because I'm completely desperate of, of and void of ideas. And the idea, at least one idea of this, is to go. I can't even do that. I want to get my knight to C3, knight to F3, because if I can somehow get these three pieces 
somehow coming in. Like maybe I can sack a piece somewhere and get the queen to g6. That could be working, but the, the opening has been disaster. So I will make sure I improve and never play this, the same mistake I've done in this game. I mean, probably the computer never really likes this kind of pawn sack line for white, but I'm looking when I put it on the analysis afterwards for an equal position being a pawn down because that will indicate that I've got uh, extra, I will have very very good play in, in in any ensuring positions but the way the way this has gone um it's 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 not worked out very well for me as you can tell okay so my opponent has come in and now well knight to h3 does that give me a glimmer of hope let's play knight to h3 okay and um at least now my knight does it ever have potential? Okay, I mean, I, I mean, this check. Can I ever get an attack going with this check? I don't think so. He's just taking here. I've got to keep the queens on the board, don't I? Yes, I do. If I if I swap queens, I'm, I'm too much material down. So I have to play rook takes here. But now just bishop takes d6, and uh, bishop b4 is coming. I mean, after bishop d6, I can't even go rook back to this square again. So I'm not sure why my opponent is thinking here. Bishop takes d6 is is the move to be played. And again, my piece is really struggling. That's been a problem with this one. And well, of course, I can't even move my rook because it's pinned as well. So it's just quite it's multiple problems going on today, isn't it? This is like problemville, bloody hell, all over the shop. I mean, what what can I even do here? Um, you know, I, I, I mean, I, I can't do pretty much anything uh, in, in, in this position. It's bloody horrible. So we will play it out, um, I guess, uh, even though I'm not sure why I want to do that to myself. I'll, I'll flick this one in. Can't think of anything better to do. And with, with maybe, I don't know, a check or something. Uh, if rook with bishop here, I'll take it. We, we 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 have to try desperation move like this, but this is this is real desperation. Okay, he's gone to e5. So this one is is now pinned. Okay, I'll play here, and all credit to my opponent who, who's played very well. I mean, I got knight g5 to try to win my exchange back, but he has just played the best move so that's a bit of a whitewash there a bit of a whitewash so we will have a look now on the computer let me just readjust the board that's not a good uh it wasn't a good bloody game for uh that's probably one of my one of my worst games um that i've i've done to be honest on on the, what from me one of my you know the way i played that was was really pretty appalling but okay uh, i suppose it does happen so i'm a bit pissed off at myself um but i want to know where i went wrong so let's have a look where i went wrong probably a number of things i did wrong there in that game and um, i'll put the computer analysis on so let's just do self analysis i'll include this is one this is one game i'm going to use the computer because you've probably seen in the past i, I don't always analyze my games here with a computer but why, why am I doing it now? The reason I'm doing it now, if you have a particularly tactical game or the opening, you know, you shouldn't be getting in trouble with white in the opening for tactical reasons. Computers are very good at tactics. So they will they will tell you tactically um, what, what, what has been a mistake. Not a very good experiment there though. Bloody hell, that's the worst Tropovskis I've ever had. So let's have a look. So um, um, after we had Queen B6, now this uh, seems like a, you know I know knight d2 is the right move and now h6 maybe this whole plan is not correct of taking on e4 maybe as the computer indicates I should be going for a line like this when my opponent can now take on b2 because there's some issue with my bishop but maybe I can get some counterplay here just by simply after the check playing queen d2 Queen takes e4 and now f3. And then when the queen moves, let's say queen to 
Uh, or queen to d4, I don't really want to allow. Have I got a better move than f3 here? There should be some compensation. Maybe e3 is better. Let's play e3. Just try to go knight out and bring my bishop out. This is, this is certainly some compensation. So, um, I mean, okay. I mean, the computer does give it slightly better for black, but black's a pawn up. Um, so I expect that this is uh, this this was maybe a better way to play. I'm not sure my knight takes e4 was entirely correct. So let's have a look. My opponent now took on g5. I take back, and he goes queen takes b2. The problem I had here is that as soon as I lose my dark square bishop, my uh, queen side and my dark squares are very hard to defend. Okay, I played the top move, rook to h3. And this gives me possibilities. And my opponent now pretty much played the top computer move. Knight to a6, as we can see. So he goes knight to a6. And now this knight is coming here. And already here, I'm, I'm doubting whether c3 was the move. Maybe I should have played rook b3 as I, I first intended. I was worried about queen d4. Um, and after this move, can I keep the queens on? Uh, with something like rook d3. No, because this pawn's dropping. I kind of like I kind of like black's position. So my black my opponent's picked a very good opening line here. Um, okay, well c3. It kind of feels all right because it it does um, you know stop stop the queen from coming in. But my opponent again picks the second top move of stockfish uh, f6. I was only hoping for a move like d6 here. But the problem then is my opponent will find it very hard to play f6 because my knight can come into this square. So clearly f6 is a better move. And now I have this problem because where does my knight move to? Okay, I played rook b1. And I was very surprised here my opponent did not take on a2. Again, at the top move there, I'm sure most people would take on a2. But he takes on a3, keeping an eye on the pawn on c3. Okay, I play the top move. Uh, oh no, I don't. I play rook b3. So this was this was the major mistake. My next move, as I as I found out later, um, my rook was actually just on a bad square on b3. I needed my rook covering my back rank, and there's no point giving away this pawn. Had I played um, knight to e4 here, maybe this is something I could experiment with in future. Let's say the same thing occurs, d6, uh, at some point, and now does this this certainly gives me more play than the game but i'm still very doubtful about my compensation with these two pieces but okay this is much more interesting why why am i giving up the pawn with tempo my move rook b3 is simply a bad bad move so actually this game my opponent picked a good opening line i got myself in in trouble very early, early on not knowing the theory this shows you when you do need to know theory in openings i'm experimenting with a new opening i'm going to have to look at this in in, in more detail um, if I want to play this this line again, and and I got kind of tricked, and you, it happens here. Let's just have a look at the rest of the game. Queen takes here, knight to e4, and now, um, okay. Well, my opponent brings his knight back in, and again he's playing. He's always playing sort of the second move, uh, pretty much of of stockfish. So he's he's playing just good moves, knight to c7, and okay. Rook to e3, and I'm hoping for this check, but my opponent dodges that. King to f7. We'll just see if there's any tactics later on. And here, my position is very bad. Uh, and the two games I've lost at this longer time limit when I've recorded, actually, if you seem to recall, have both been when I've picked very sharp variations. Okay, the last time I played a computer cheat, so I lost against computer cheat. I, I mean, I doubt my opponent was using a computer here. But the two times I've lost is when I pick very sharp lines as white and I haven't been sure of the theory and I haven't double checked it. So I really need to be a bit careful. If I'm going to play such lines, I need to do my homework more. Okay, c4. And now again, we see uh, the top move being played. I don't think it's a very natural move, b5, but we, we see it coming in. And okay, uh, I'm really struggling. I took this one, took on b5, and again top move for my opponent queen a5 check uh, my position is really in trouble here knight c3 and again my opponent plays the best move hitting d5 threatening to take here 
and I've got no coordination. I'm really struggling. I try some desperate gambit here. Uh, most people I assume would take on d6, but uh, knight d5 is a very logical move. And now, well, after my rook moves, it's really bad news. We have c4, top move there very quickly. Rook comes back. And now e6 again, it's a hard move to see. Second move there, or first move. So he's always played very accurately in this game. And I don't want to make any assertions. I'm too, I get too paranoid. Uh, but to be honest, I mean, whatever the rating, you know, if my opponent, you know, played an honest game here, he played a fantastic game. He, he played 2600 strength here. Uh, he, he's, um, he's grabbed the pawn earlier on and he's played either one or this first or second move of the computer. And, you know, even for, you know, I say 2600, that's probably 2700 strength. Even for a 2600 grandmaster would struggle against such a player on such top form. So uh, now queen c2, top move again, king d2, um, and rook to h1, second move, every move's a first or second, knight to h3, trying some desperation, but of course top move again, and now I can't swap queens, I'm too many pawns down. After this, he just eliminates on d6, top move, my queen comes in, and here, uh, you know, um, well, top move again, and you can see that it's really game over, rook c1, and then this nice little tactic, um, rook takes f1. So very well played game for my opponent there. And where did I mainly go wrong? Well, I'm thinking now, if I had this again in future, if I went for this sacrifice, h6 seems like a very uh, good way to play. I've never faced this move before. This, this seems like a good theoretical move. I've got to make decision now. And I think the best way to play is probably to keep my bishop. I, I Now I've gone through that game. I'm thinking I want to keep my bishop because my dart squares were becoming too weak. And the key line here is if he grabs on this square, when um, it looks like knight takes e4 is the main move. But the computer is now given some other lines. And this is why I'm just wondering, do I have, do I have a, a rook to b1 as well? Um, do I have some ideas like this? Well, let's have a look. Knight takes e4. This is quite forcing. There's a check. He's going to win one of my pieces back. So how do I sacrifice a piece? What's the best way? Queen d2 seems to clear a piece of the back rank. And this position here is, is the key position for the opening. Is there any way I can prove enough compensation for white in this position? Or do I have to give up this line? And I'm thinking, as I said, and it looks like the computer may be coming to agreement uh, it's either e3 or f3. I don't want to allow his queen to d4. So I think the move instinctively which I, I, I would play would be e3 here and um, I'm going to be trying to I mean his queen it's actually quite annoying to to budge this queen and this is a position I think is key maybe for this whole variation otherwise uh, my opening with h4 has been busted so a good learning experience and that shows you how you can um, if you're trying to learn a new opening you could do a similar thing to this. Play against a good player, even play against a computer, and um, play play it out as well as you can on your own, and then afterwards analyze with the computer and see if you see where you went wrong, see how you can improve. So uh, that was a good good learning experience anyway, but um, not a particularly good game. Um, I shouldn't be playing these lines uh, unless I know them very well. <coughs> Thought I'd experiment, backfired. Often happens. Um, and my opponent played exceptionally well, uh, I reckon 2600 plus game from him there. And he did it very quickly as well. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching that. I'm going to try to also, uh, Tactics Tuesday is today. Um, so I'm going to try to get a, a tactics video out if I can. Um, I'm going to be streaming tomorrow at 3 p.m. Uh, GMT. So come and join me for a stream. And I'm streaming on Friday as well so tomorrow and friday at 3 p.m for two hours and then i'm off to gibraltar for a couple of weeks on saturday so there'll be a bit of a gap in videos then but you can catch my live commentary over there do like do subscribe to my channel and um i'm waiting for all the bad comments now how can you lose to such a low rated player hey ho that is part of life okay bye for now